that team stands and stands and stands and doesn't let them in. Man, that's the most awesome thing I think there is in football. But it's not always glorious to most people because they want to see the score. They want to see the touchdown. They want to see the dance and all that. You have to learn to defend yourself spiritually. First thing he says, gird your waist with truth. And you gird your waist with truth, he says, what is truth? Truth, sincerity, and the deepest, most inner parts of our lives, God wants you and I to be sincere. Amen. He tells us about in how we should be sincere in Matthew chapter 5. He says that you must have a pure heart. Your motives must be pure. The most inward parts of your being must be pure. Don't forget, God sees inside your heart. He sees in you. He knows whether or not you're real. Jesus on the earth, he called out hypocrisy everywhere he went. John the Baptist, full of the Holy Spirit, called out hypocrisy everywhere he went. They came out and said, no, nope, I'm not baptizing you, hypocrites and vipers. I'm not going to do it. Bring forth, therefore, fruits of repentance. He says, he just told them like it was. Hypocrisy, he exposed it. And that's what we must do in our own lives. We must be willing to expose hypocrisy in our own lives. We're not called to point out hypocrisy in other people's lives, first. I hope you hear me on that this morning. Now, the pastor's up here. You know the pastor's out doing things he shouldn't be doing on a Saturday night. He comes in here and tells you to be pure. You know he's not being pure. Yeah, the elders should call me out. But we're not, set, we're not called to, to point out other people's faults. You need to be first examining yourself. I just think, I think we just had a message about the speck and the eye and the plank. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Examine, examine, examine. Take inventory. See if there's any hypocrisy in you. Sincerity. Gird yourself with the belt of truth. First of all, sincerity. It was prophesied in Isaiah 11 5 about Jesus. That righteousness should be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. And folks, if it is, it is prophesied of him and we are followers of him, then it must be said of us. Does everyone know what a girl is? Most of you women know what a girl is. Yeah. I don't think they do that thing so much anymore. I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I know what a girl is on, on, a, on a horse putting out a saddle on. Tighten that thing up. Now this armor that Paul is talking about is a Roman soldier, a depiction of a Roman soldier, and he sees this belt. And this belt is holding this whole armor together. And he's got it tight on him. When we wear a belt, we want to tighten our belt up. We're even told in scriptures to gird up your loins. What's that mean? Gird up your loins. That's King James stuff. That's what the loins are talking about pulling up. Back then they didn't wear jeans. They, they wore robes and stuff, and they had to pull them up in time and they gird them up so they could do some work. We are to have that. Waste, gird your waist with truth. Sincerity must be close in our life. It must, truth must, we must hold on to it. One thing you must realize that God desires this for all of his soldiers, for all of those who follow him. And truth, this is what you take note of about truth. Truth never changes. You need to understand that. Truth in any situation. Now some people distort the truth. It doesn't mean truth has changed. Some pastors get up and preachers and bands get up and they tell other things that aren't true. It does not mean that truth has changed. You always ask for truth. You always look for truth. You always knock on the door of truth. And you will get truth. But a lot of the times we don't want the truth. Why? Because it tells us something about ourselves. And we don't like it. And so we dodge the question. Truth. Sincerity. Gird around you, hold tight to it. It's what's going to hold your armor together. Now, truth must be so ingrained in our most inward parts. We must cling to it. And I'm going to tell you something what truth will do. Truth will protect you. My grandmother used to say, if you always tell the truth, you never have to remember what you said. People that lie, people that are habitual liars, did I say that right? Habitual liar. People that are habitual liars, they sometimes, a lot of times, forget five or six sentences ago, but we can do what they said because they're lying all the time. And they get caught in lies. You remember this. The scripture says your sins will find you out. So let me tell you something. Always tell the truth. You never have to remember 
what you said. Truth will also, it will protect you against some practices or habits of life that are ungodly. Now, the libertine practices, does anybody know what libertine is? Libertine, libertinism? This is one thing that will protect you against. You know what libertine practices are? No. You want to hear? No. Yeah. Libertine practices do this, and their habits they disregard authority, and then they have a convention and some sexual <coughs> or religious matters. Wrong way. It will also protect you against licentiousness. And that's a hard one to say, but it's one of those works of the flesh. It's mentioned in Galatians chapter 5. What in the world is licentiousness? That's a hard one. Especially that right now. It is sexual immorality. Any type of sex, sorry, young people, this morning, any type of sex outside of marriage is sexual immorality. That's what it says. Truth will tell you this. It will protect you from this. Have you not ever noticed that even in religious spectrums, when, when, when pastors or evangelists and those high in, this, in, the, in the ministry seem to go wrong, what's the first way they go wrong? They do the avenue of adultery and sexual immorality. They choose the way to go. Why? Because they veer from truth. Now, these are the things that are going to come against you. These are works of the flesh that are against you. This is one thing you must hold on to the truth. Now, the next one is the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness, it says here, must be our breastplate. Why? What is a breastplate? On the Roman soldier, the breastplate is what they, they put around. It's like I said, the breast area. The, 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 it protected your core. It protected right here at the front. It, it wasn't a shield, but it just protected. And the main thing it protected was your vitals. Your vital organs. And your most important Bible word is your heart. And what Paul wants us to realize is he tells us in this spiritual armor, this heart that we're being protected, that scripture tells us that our heart is the wellspring of life. And what we need to realize before we come to Christ, I've tried to share this with people, and they get so mad. Not believers get so mad at me when I tell them this. Your heart is sick. The scripture says your heart is deceptive. And you ever notice a lot of people out there just say, I don't think this is wrong. I don't think that is wrong. And that's certainly okay. We have all these opinions about what's right and what's wrong. And the scripture says, you know how the scripture addresses that? There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads only to death. Well, that's just some religious book. You don't really know. That's the truth. It's what happens. We can have all what's right and wrong, but folks, there must be a standard somewhere. Righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness will guard your heart and the wellspring of life. Now, to continue this story of having a sick heart, how do we get fixed? We all need a new one. Amen? Amen. We're plainly told in Scripture that we must be born again. <coughs> and we are born again of the Spirit. The Spirit gives us a new heart. And we will and desire. Now, when we come into that part of our life, and we are now believers, we're now born again, we're set free, we've repented of our sins, we need some protection. Why? Because we're still in the flesh. And I know it's hard to take, but even as Christians, we are going to face temptation and we're going to veer off track if we don't guard our hearts. Amen. We must guard our heart. We must continue to hold on to truth and we must. Have this breastplate of righteousness on. Now, the Apostle Paul explains it this way. First Thessalonians 5 and 8. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Now, folks, what this includes is all Christian graces. And the way that we operate, all of us, says faith and love. It just, it just on everything right there. We also must understand this. Righteousness is a position. It isn't just a word. Folks, it's a position. What I mean, we must be in right standing. Let's go watch this as well. We must be in right standing with God. How do we get that? You see, before we are in right standing with God, obviously we're afraid of the world and we're an enemy of God. Yes. And any enemy of God will not stand, I promise you. Who is like an enemy of that? And folks, none of us can stand against the wrath of God. And we don't need to know this. 
And so this breastplate of righteousness, we need to understand righteousness is a position that protects us from the divine wrath. On the day that you meet God face to face. Now, God being Jesus Christ, being your judge. Okay? You understand that? I pray that you find him as your friend on that day and not your judge. Amen. On the day you come face to face with Jesus Christ, I pray you be in right standing with him. That he looks at you and says on his right, come in and enter in the joy of the Lord, which has been prepared for you since the foundation of the world. I pray you on his left. He says, depart from me, you that work in iniquity. I never knew you. I never had this. You never had me born again. You've never been a Christian. You've never made that stand. You've never, ever confessed to me as your Savior. I pray that you don't find yourself on that side because that is divine wrath. And I promise you, that is not where you want to be. And don't tell me, Shannon, I just may want to go there. But you just may want to. When you get there, you won't. I promise you that. Folks, you need to understand that being right standing with God is only one way. It's in Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says, He who knew no sin became sin, so that we might be the righteousness of God. The only way to be in right standing with God is to be in Christ. That's it. There's no other way. There's no other religion. There's nothing else. It's only in Christ. You must accept that. Not because the pastor says so, but because the word of God says so. Now, the next thing he tells us to put on these, these, these shoes. Gospel shoes. Preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, some of you think, well, this is not nothing to do with defense. Yes, it is. It's still protecting you. Now, you have the breastplate of righteousness. You have the belt of truth that says first. And now we've got these shoes, these gospel shoes, these shoes that are ready, made for preparation. And folks, I don't know about you all, but when I go out to do some work, or if I have to go out into the battlefield, I don't want to go out there barefooted. There's rocks out there. Now, when I was a little kid, I could run on rocks without a problem. But I can't.